Hi there, and welcome to this lesson on Pure Mathematics 4. In this lesson, we're on Chapter 7, 7.2, and the second part of an introduction to vectors. In this lesson, we're looking at how vectors are represented numerically. A vector is usually represented by separating the distance from the start point to the end point into its x and y components. So how far have you gone in the x direction? How far have you gone in the y direction? And then the vector is represented by a column vector. So the vector from A to B, um, we could write it as R, or we can write it as a column vector, where x is the distance traveled in the x direction, and y is the distance traveled in the y direction. So for example, if the distance in the x direction was 4 and the distance in the y direction was 3, then the vector AB we would write as the column vector 4 on the top, 3 on the bottom. And the conventions for plus and minus with these numbers, they're exactly the same convention as we use for coordinates. So x and y, it's the order that you write the numbers in when you write coordinates, it's the same for vectors, and plus and minus mean the same thing as well. So for example, if you had to find the vector from P to Q, um, we'd be going up five and we'd be going backwards eight. So the distance in the X direction would be minus eight if we were going from P to Q. Okay, bearing all of that in mind, I'll let you have a go at this example yourself. So try and write these two vectors as column vectors with the right numbers and the right signs. Pause the video, have a go, come back to me when you're ready. Okay, let's have a look at this. So as we said, to get from P to Q, um, two things are going on. We're going up five, that'll be plus five. We're going backwards eight, that'll be minus eight. Now we need to do the X direction first. So the minus eight will be the first number. That's how far we've gone in the X direction. And then the plus five second, because we've gone up five in the Y direction. The vector from Q to P, exactly the same, but the complete opposite. So now we'll have gone to the right eight, so that'll be plus eight, and we'll have gone down five, so that'll be minus five. Multiplying and adding vectors follow exactly the normal conventions that you use with normal brackets. So given that the vector P was equal to five minus three and the vector R equals seven minus six, have a go yourself at working out what P plus R is and what three P minus five R is. And you just treat these like you would do normal brackets using the normal algebraic rules. Okay, I'll let you have a go at working this out yourself. Pause the video and then come back to me when you're ready. Okay, let's have a look. So P plus R first of all. So P plus R, we just do P, the vector five minus three, plus R, the vector seven minus six. Five plus seven gives us 12, minus three plus minus six, gives us minus nine. And part two, three P minus five R. Well, three P, we just do three times by the vector P, and five R, we just do five times the vector R. So that would give us 15 minus nine, when we do three P, and 35 minus 30, when we do five R. And then carrying out the subtraction, 15 take away 35 is minus 20. Minus nine minus minus 30 is minus nine plus 30, which is 21. Now, there is a second form of notation used for vectors. It does mean exactly the same as a column vector. Uh, it's quite frequently used in physics and mechanics. Um, a lot of people find it a little bit more confusing at first. It does mean the same thing, but it is just another way of writing vectors down. It's called I and J notation. I, first of all, I is a unit vector that goes in the X direction. So i is the vector 1, 0. It goes 1 in the x direction and 0. It doesn't go up or down. So it's a vector length 1 in the x direction. And j is the same thing, but in the y direction. So j is the vector 0, 1. It doesn't go anywhere in the x direction, but it goes vertically upwards by 1. Um, it's the unit vector in the y direction. So for example, if we had the column vector 3, 4, that means we've gone three in the x direction, that's three i, plus four in the y direction, that's four j. So you can write it as a column vector, three, four, 
you can write it in ij notation as 3i plus 4j. And don't think that there's a difference between these two things. They mean exactly the same thing. It's just two different ways of writing down the vector. Okay, I'll let you have a go at getting used to that. So example three, we're given three vectors in i and j notation. A is 3i plus 4j, b is 5i minus 2j, and c is 2i minus 4j. And you're asked to work out these two things, doing a combination of multiplying and adding and subtracting. And give your answers both in i and j notation and also as a column vector, just to get used to using both forms of notation. Okay, pause the video, have a go at this, and then come back to me when you're ready. Okay, let's have a look. So first of all, 3a plus 2b minus a half c. So staying with the i and j notation, that'll be three times by this, plus two times by that, minus a half times by that. You multiply the brackets in the normal way. That'll give you 9a plus 12j plus 10i minus 4j minus i plus 2j. And you collect the terms in the normal way. So collecting the i's together, we get 18i. Collecting the j's together, we get 10j. And writing that as a column vector, it would be the vector 18, 10. And I say again, these do mean exactly the same thing. It's just two ways of writing down a vector. Second question, uh, lots of minuses, minus two times a, minus three times b, minus four times c. In ij notation, we would have this. Multiplying out the brackets will give us that. Collecting the i's and j's together will give us minus 29i plus 14j. And writing that as a column vector, we'll have minus 29 14. Okay, example four is slightly different. Uh, we're given three vectors, a, b, and c in ij notation. First of all, we're asked to work out the vector p, which is a plus b, and then we're asked to work out the vector q, which is 3a minus 3c, and then we're asked to prove that the vector p is parallel to the vector q. So p and q have to go in the same direction, but they don't have to have the same magnitude. What that means is that P needs to be a multiple of Q. So maybe P is two times Q, or five times Q, or 10 times Q. And that would mean they do go in the same direction, but they have a different size from each other. So that's what you're going to do. Work out the vector P, work out the vector Q, and then show that one is a multiple of the other. And that'll mean that they're parallel. Okay, I'll let you have a go at doing all of that. Pause the video, come back to me when you're ready. Okay, let's have a look. So first of all, we need to work out the vectors P and Q. Well, P is A plus B. If I add A and B together, I would get that, which simplifies to 3i plus 5j. Same thing for Q, 3a minus 3c would be that. Multiply the brackets will give me that. Collect the i's and j's together gives me q is equal to 9i plus 15j. And then the last thing we have to do is prove that p is parallel to q. Well, q is equal to 3 times by p. 3 threes are 9 for the i's, 3 fives are 15 for the j's. So q is exactly 3 times by p. And what that means is that the vectors p and q are parallel to each other. q is 3 times as long, but uh, they are parallel. Okay, that gets us to the end of this lesson. If you've got the textbook, then turn to page 104 and have a go at exercise 7b. Thanks very much for listening and cheerio.